Welcome to Friendly Bible Studies. Giving a Bible study today. I hope I am looking in the right place. Give me one second while we get this set up. All right, here we go. And you'll, I'm just getting used to this. So give me one second. And I'm so sorry, this may not be perfect. Here we go. The Bible study that I am giving today is the only begotten. So let's go ahead and get started. John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Understanding begotten. Many people try to say that Jesus Christ isn't God, that Jesus is an equal in essence to God. They see Jesus as the second part of the Trinity. They see the word begotten and think Jesus is a created being because only someone who had a beginning in time can be begotten. What they do not see is that begotten in the New Testament is a Greek word. It does not have the same English meaning that men see it in. The Greek word is monogenesis, and if I'm pronouncing anything wrong, forgive me. It has two primary definitions pertaining to being this is, these are, this is the definition of begotten, just to clarify. It has two primary definitions pertaining to being the only one of its kind with a specific relationship and or two pertaining to being the only one of its kind or class, unique in kind. Thus, monogenesis may be used both as an adjective meaning unique and special. That holy thing that shall be born. Luke 1 and 35. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Herefore also, That holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And my camera is in the way. So let me see if I can move my camera out of the way. I can just turn it off, but you'll still be able to hear me. What is born, begotten, and beget? So what is born? The definition of born is having been given life. Jesus was born of Mary, not Mary and Joseph. Luke 1 and 35, the angel told Mary, born of thee. Begotten, being the only one of its kind with a specific relationship and or pertaining to being the only one of its kind or class, unique and kind. Jesus was the only begotten Son of God. God was a spirit. He had no flesh or body. Beget, to bring about, to put something into effect. Jesus had to be brought about He had to be put into effect. It was all part of the plan. Okay, let's see if we can bring the camera back up. 
And let's see if we can go to the next page. Okay, I'll have to shut the camera back off so I can read this. To be begotten in English, meaning there is no uniqueness, because you, in a sense, were begotten. But begotten in English, meaning there is no uniqueness, meaning you have been fathered by a fleshly man, born of the world, you have been produced as offspring. In English meaning, something is begotten when it's been generated by procreation. In other words, I was procreated. Procreation through production of offspring. Reproduction. Procreated. The production of offspring. Reproduction. In general, animals mate purely for the purpose of procreation. You and I were born clearly for the purpose of procreation. Okay, the purpose of man. Genesis 1, chapter 26 through 28. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have domain over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth so god created man in his own image in the image of god created he him male and female created he them and God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have domain over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And then if you see the camera coming on and off during this, I do apologize. I have to take the camera off so I can read everything that you're seeing. To clarify Genesis chapter 1 and 26 where it says, let us. First, I'm going to start with Isaiah 45, 5 through 6. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is no God beside me. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me, that they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none beside me. I am the Lord, and there is none else. John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Notice in chapter 1 and 27, it says, God created man in his own image. It does not say in the image of his Son did God create man, but man was created in the image of God. Also notice it says, and God said unto them. It doesn't say, they said unto them. If you notice that the word own is also in italics. Words printed in italics in the King James Bible. The use of italics in the version in the King James Version, are to call attention to the words that were added by the translators in order to convey and clarify the meaning and to distinguish between words found in the manuscripts of the Hebrew Old Testament and the Greek, the New Testament. 
So in Genesis, the translators wanted to make sure that when read, it was clear that God made man in his image. Colossians 1, 15 through 18. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. It's almost like it's asking us a question. That very first verse. Who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities, or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the premises. I have the firstborn of the dead highlighted. Why? Well, in the very beginning, the devil had power over death. But when Jesus died on that cross, when his body died, because God cannot die, because remember, God is a spirit. So when that body died on that cross, then God took the keys back and rose from the dead. And that's when Jesus rose back from the dead because why had that body was laying in that grave? If you've ever heard the story, how the devil and the Lord were wrestling during that time. And God took the keys back. The purpose of man and the only begotten. In the beginning, man was created to have domain over the animals and populate the world. Jesus came to this world to live an overcoming life and die for our sins, defeat death, a sin back into heaven and send his spirit so we now could be made overcomers. You see, God is a spirit. He cannot die. He had to have a body of flesh that could. While that body lay in that grave, he defeated the devil and took the keys of death back. Then he rose that body from its grave. What about the word begotten in Hebrews 11, 17 through 19? Hebrew is the Old Testament. Hebrew meaning of begotten in Hebrews chapter 11 means the only legitimate child describing Isaac, the son of Abraham. But Isaac was not Abraham's only son. No, he was not. But he was the only son of whom the covenant was upon. Legitimate, conforming to the law or to rules, adjective, legitimate in accordance with established rules, principles, or standards, born in wedlock or of legally married parents. This meaning of begotten has not the same meaning as John 3 and 16. Are you still asking questions? John chapter 1, 6 through 12. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. 
But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John was not the light. He came to bear witness that we might believe. John was sent from God. God was that true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. God was in the world. How do we know that? Are you still confused? The Begotten, John chapter 1 and 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, and the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Now we know Jesus, the begotten, with a purpose to overcome sin, to die for our sins, to rise up, to take the keys back from the devil who had power over death. And that is why we can now say in 1 Corinthians 15 and 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? In the beginning, John 1 and 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. John 1 and 14, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Colossians 1, 15 through 18. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning of the firstborn from the dead, that on all things he might have the premises. John 14 and 6 and Matthew 16, 13 and 20. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Matthew 16, 13 and 20. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi and Correct me if I'm mispronouncing these words because I sure um, I am. He asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Eliza, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But who say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. But my Father which is in heaven, and I say also unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus Christ. I was reading this earlier before I started this Bible, and while I was reading it, it said when the Lord was talking to 
Simon. I'll just read it again. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. And that's what it takes sometimes because our flesh and our blood can't even begin sometimes to comprehend to comprehend who Jesus is, that he was the begotten, that he was created, that he was begot, that he was brought forth for a purpose. And it all started from the very beginning, from the very beginning of time before we were even born. God had a plan. See, we were begotten to, for, for a purpose, to simply populate the earth. But Jesus was begotten for a reason. And that reason was not to populate the earth, but to die for our sins, to help us to be overcomers so that one day we would sit in heaven with him. And I just read that and, you know, flesh and blood, we don't, I don't think any of us maybe will always understand the fullness of the Godhead, but one day when we get there, it's all gonna, it's all gonna be worth it. And, um, then not only after I read that, you know, something else, you know, popped, you know, something else affected me too when I was reading this. And it says, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. And even though I've seen these words and I've read them a thousand times, just something within me this morning was like, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. We can bind things. And whatsoever thou shalt loose, and we can loose things on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Well, I don't want to bind anything in heaven. I want God to have his will in my life. But I was thinking, you can lose things and right now if you are in your house and you are at home and there is pain in your house you can loose the spirit of forgiveness into your house you can loose the spirit of love into your house you can loose that love and you can loose forgiveness I release and I loose the spirit of love into my house. I want to loose the spirit of forgiveness into my house in the name of Jesus. And remember it says, whatever thou loosed shall be loose in heaven. So God is hearing you this morning and he hears your prayers. So I just wanted, I hope that encouraged somebody today. To beget, bring forth. John 14 and 9 in the King James verses. Jesus saith unto him, Have I been so long time with you, and yet thou hast not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou, then show us the Father? John, 1 John chapter 5 and 1 Whosoever believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and every one that believeth that loveth him that begat loveth him also that is begotten. Notice it says that the Holy Ghost came upon her. And this is relating back to the angel coming to, to Mary. Notice it says that the Holy Ghost came upon her, not that it filled her, not that she was filled with the Holy Ghost, but that it came on her. After his death, it fills us. So once Jesus died on that cross, then he was able to fill us with the Holy Ghost. 
It also said that the power of the highest shall overshadow her. It says that Mary was overshadowed. She was chosen. She was overshadowed. The Holy Ghost. John 7, 38 and 39. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this he spake of the Spirit, which they that believeth on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because that Jesus was not yet glorified. Once Jesus was glorified and ascended back into heaven, this Holy Ghost would now be poured out in us. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. The Holy Ghost had to be sent, because they still did not believe. The Holy Ghost was to reprove the world of sin. So God robed himself in flesh for a purpose, and called himself the Son of God, the only begotten, and died for our sins, should that not have been the end of it? No, it was the beginning of God's church. His death covered our sins. Baptism washes away the sins. So what does the Holy Ghost do? It reproves us of those sins. The Holy Ghost is to reprimand us rebuke us from sin, to correct us when we are wrong, and it is that voice in your heart. So I just kind of want to, I want to end there today with this. Um, go back up a little bit. the only begotten. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. He wants you to have everlasting life. All right. Thank you for everyone who has tuned in and who has watched this video. And I hope this has enlightened somebody, and I hope this message has encouraged someone. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, and you'll have a good one. All right. to figure out how to stop it. <laughs>